Mary Sabrin on Ron Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to take a few seconds and my, preface my remark by saying that uh, last week I announced my candidacy for the United States Senate this year. And on Friday, <laughs> and on Friday we're having the uh, opening of our campaign headquarters in Jersey City at 30 Montgomery uh, Street. You're all welcome at 7 p.m. to our grand opening. You can go to murraysaverin.com and get all the information about the grand opening and the positions I will be taking in this competitive primary on June 3rd. So uh, thank you again for inviting me here. I've spoken several times at the Wayne Republican Club, and uh, I feel I've been here so long that you're starting to tax me on my property, so that, uh, <laughs> even though we just moved to Fort Lee. Anyway, I've known Congressman Paul for 25 years. I consider him not only a personal friend, but one of the greatest statesmen in this country's history, certainly in its post-war history. And since we're in a very crucial presidential election campaign, I always ask myself, what would the greatest Republican presidential candidate say and do regarding these candidates? I'm talking about Ronald Reagan, who in 1976, people said, was unelectable. He was a fringe candidate. He'd never be elected. And four years later, he won the presidency, and in 1984, he won re-election, I think, with 49 states. Massachusetts always has to stick out. And so Ronald Reagan said, we need to get government off our backs. And Ron Paul was only one of four congressmen supporting former Governor Reagan in 1976. And Gerald Ford called, called him into the office when he was president and said, I want your support. And as a freshman congressman, Ron Paul said, I'm sorry, Mr. President, I'm going to support Ronald Reagan. Think of the courage it took to tell the President of the United States you're not going to support him for re-election. And that's the courage of a, of a Ron Paul. Now let's say, let's figure out where we are today as a nation. We are in an unpopular war with no end in sight. 70% of the people of New Jersey are opposed to this war. We are on the edge of a major recession that Congressman Paul has warned about for a couple of years now. We got kicked out of power in 2006 because of runaway spending, because of ethical breaches, and we lost our confidence as a party to stand up for our ideals of limited government free enterprise. In other words, we are at a major crossroads in the history of this country, and our, our party is leaderless, looking for a leader to take the party back, to take the country back from the collectivist ideology that's rampant in Washington, D.C. We have six candidates running for office. They all have strengths, and they all have weaknesses. But let's look at the strengths of a candidate that Ronald Reagan would support. Now, how do we, how do we how would he analyze the candidate? Let's go to the Constitution, the First Amendment. We have McCain-Feingold, the greatest assault on the First Amendment that's ever been enacted in the United States. McCain, Feingold, Thompson, and other candidates support that assault on the First Amendment. Ron Paul voted against it. Let's go to the Second Amendment. Ron Paul never voted for any federal restrictions on the Second Amendment, your right to bear arms. What about the Fourth Amendment? The Patriot Act was passed when no member of Congress read it. Now, if you go to the Congress of the United States and you are sworn in to uphold the Constitution, how could you possibly vote on a bill that you have not read that has one of the greatest assaults on civil liberties, according to Judge Napolitano, who has written three books on the subject? Ron Paul voted no. He needed time to analyze the Patriot Act. What about the Ninth and Tenth Amendments? which say if it's not in the Constitution, it's reserved to the people and the states. Ron Paul has never voted for a bill to expand government power. He's never <coughs> voted to spend the Social Security Trust Fund. He's never voted for an unbalanced budget. He's never voted to raise taxes. He's never voted to regulate the Internet. He is Dr. No for government expansion and Dr. Yes for free enterprise and liberal government. So we know where Ronald Reagan would stand today given the candidates' positions on the Bill of Rights. Now, Congressman Paul supported George Bush in, in, in 2000 because George Bush said, we must have a humble foreign policy. We can't have nation voting. That's not what the Republican Party is all about. And so what happened in 2004? We had nation voting. We had preemptive war, which I must say, there's one thing I really admire about Ron Paul. He doesn't wear his religion 
nor his compassion on his sleeve. As a physician for 35 years, he's delivered babies, and he's treated the poor for free. And he doesn't wear his religion on his sleeve. He takes his religion, religious principles and applies them in public life, namely the just war theory. He will not go to war unless there's an imminent attack. He will not go to war unless it's justified. And so what we have is a candidate who wants to reduce the size and scope of government by getting rid of the income tax. Not with a fair tax, but getting rid of the $1 trillion that's wasted by the federal government every year. He wants to get rid of unnecessary bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. He's voted continuously not to expand them. The Republican Party was supposed to be against the Department of Education. And yet we keep on expanding the Department of Education so local schools have to pay more and more for education because of all these mandates. So Ron Paul is in the tradition of the principles that founded this nation. Decentralization, power to the people, free enterprise, a foreign policy that makes sense, that protects our borders. And so we can have a free and stable America. So the choice to me is very clear on February 5th. I've known this man for 25 years. I've spoken to him on numerous occasions. He's the most honorable, decent human being, not only in politics, but as a person that I've met in my lifetime. So I ask you to support someone who will not only make America better for all people, if you look at the people that are supporting Ron Paul, it's not only Republicans, it's not only Democrats, it's not only independents, it's young people who are coming into the party for the first time. He's bringing people together because, as he says, freedom is a pop popular message. And that's what Ron Paul offers the people of New Jersey. That's what he offers the people of the United States. And with your help, we will elect somebody that will protect all our rights to make the country prosperous and to make sure we have sound money because we are on the verge of a currency meltdown. Thank you. I'm